The news stories about fatal attacks on schools, workplaces, and public spaces are sad and they're scary for everybody. These days, lots of businesses and groups are learning about how to prevent or escape events like this. Greg Burns from Tactical Training Academy is here to tell us more about all of it. Greg, thanks so much for stopping by. It's my pleasure. Um, you know, a lot of the people at uh, Tactical Training Academy, from what I understand, have backgrounds in law enforcement. They're yep. uh, uniquely suited to help people in terms of workplace attacks. First of all, are workplace attacks and attacks in schools truly on the rise, or are we just hearing about them more? There's absolutely no question that they're actually on the rise. Really? Um, we're seeing numbers that are mind-blowing as far as the, the strict definition of an active shooter, mm -hmm. um, we're seeing in the last 18 years about a 600% increase no in these events happening. And the casualties, we're seeing about a 1,300% increase. Oh, um, that is horrible. Absolutely amazing. That's, that's using the, the, the definition of, a, uh, of an active shooter that the FBI put out, which is very restrictive. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, if you're walking down the street and uh, somebody comes up and tries to assault you or, or hurt or even kill the people that you love, that's not an active shooter event, even if that person's armed with a firearm. It has to be four or more uh, fatalities or injuries. Um, it has to be no specific reason, no relation to domestic oh. violence or drugs. So there's violence that's out there in the world that's not an active shooter event yeah. that we're not actually talking about. And, and you've seen a lot of it on the front lines, too. Tell us about your background. Well, my background, I'm the director of emergency management up in the Monroe School District. I um, absolutely love being up there. I direct the Tactical Training Academy. I have a cadre of instructors. Mm -hmm. Some are law enforcement and some are just people that care about other folks. And um, we basically got together uh, when I was in law enforcement and, and said, well, the average response time for law enforcement to an active shooter situation is six to eight minutes. So when the actual time an active shooter situation lasts is three minutes, yeah. There's a pretty clear disconnect. Yeah, for so sure. Who should we be spending time with? And so, the an the answer is people, right? So let's people. get to it. What do you do? What do you, how do you protect yourself? Well, I think if we're talking about protecting ourselves from violence, we have to understand what violence is first. And and we have this perception that active shooters are like swamp monsters. They they crawl out of the swamp every couple mm -hmm. of years. They eat a few people and then they go away. Um, and that's that's not how it works. You know, the the people who are committing these atrocities. Their coworkers, you know, their family members, their neighbors, and we have to understand that violence escalates in people over time. So, are there warning signs we can look for? Absolutely, absolutely, um, and it starts. I, I think if we're going to talk about a solution for violence, we have to talk about how we're loving each other, because you can imagine if if we left the show here today and we went home, and our house had completely burnt to the ground, mm -hmm. we would naturally experience some anxiety based on that. And if we didn't have any place to go, we ended up living out of our car for a couple of years, mm -hmm. well shoot, that's going to increase that anxiety. And over time, if, if that need isn't met, that can build into an act of violence. So if we can recognize from our neighbors and our coworkers, just when people are going through a problem, you know, something that's reflected from the inside out, mm -hmm. and just care about that person, I think as a culture, that's how we're actually going to start solving the violence problem. Yeah, there's a tendency for people to not want to get involved, that to pry into other people's business is something that's unwelcome, right? But it sounds to me like there are many things we can do when we start to see the warning signs. Absolutely. And that we should be getting involved and interacting with people in ways that maybe make, make us a little uncomfortable. Absolutely. And it, we hear often that in an active shooter situation, um, and I, I don't like calling them that, really. We're talking about a violent intruder. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, if you're walking to your car from Fred Meyer after going shopping and you've got two guys that are walking a little closely, we should be training people how to respond to violence. That, that's not an active shooter situation, mm -hmm. but that's violence. And recognizing those indicators are, are absolutely important. And we have to recognize that people don't just snap. You know, they, mm -hmm. they get there over time. Sometimes, sometimes that's a short period of time, a couple of days. Most of the time, it's months and years, and so recognizing that early, um, coming together both in your workplace as a team and also as individuals, we have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for loving on other people and, and then reporting as well. That's absolutely Both critical. sides of the coin, yeah. And exactly. is there anything specifically that, that people would tend to see or hear before a person becomes an active shooter? The big thing for me, and there's all sorts of pre-attack indicators, you know, I, uh, lack of hygiene or, or abusive drugs or those kinds of things. To me, the big one that stands out is justification. 
justification of extreme aggression. Hmm. Right? And it's interesting if you think, well, if, if we left here and we were driving home, mm -hmm. and we, ne we need to be home by 5.30, and you know what, it's 5.20, traffic's really bad, and that carpool lane's open, right? Mm -hmm. We start to think to ourselves, gosh, you know what? I could jump in that carpool lane. Yeah, I paid for that carpool lane. Exactly, <laughs> right? I paid for that. And uh, then some guy drives by, and there's nobody else in his car. And he's, oh, pff, well, that guy's doing it. I, I can do that. And, and we start to justify in our minds this action that we know might not necessarily be the right thing to do. Yeah, and the same can happen with an incredibly violent act. But. Exactly. And the thing is, everybody goes through this process, right, of justifying what they're doing. Even a person that's starting to justify extreme aggression. Mm. So when we start to, to have people that we care about, neighbors, friends, mm -hmm. family members, and you start to hear them justifying extreme aggression. For example, if I was to empathize with somebody who is committing an act of violence, you know, those, uh, those folks at Columbine, they had a reason to do what they did. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, right? This is, yeah. this is showing us that this person is starting to justify and humanize this act of yeah. violence. And you not. see that online as well, and when people feel a little safer to speak out and exactly. to say things that the rest of us might consider a little extreme. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's say we've missed the warning signs. A shooter has entered a public space. Now what do we do? This is worth an eight-hour class, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, the options are really simple. If you find yourself yeah, video too here, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, okay, so this is this is we see the active shooting has begun. Yeah. What, are the, what, what do you do? What we don't want to see is people not doing anything, mm -hmm. and it's very common for individuals to uh, have a fear-based response because they're in denial. Um, which is why we need to stop teaching people about active shooters and start teaching people about violence. Um, violence happens all the time. And when you encounter violence, whether that's someone who's trying to come up and take your wallet, or whether that's someone who's coming in because they want to hurt kids in your school, our response should be dynamic. Uh, first thing that we have to do is believe that we can actually change the circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, I work with kindergartner teachers, nursery individuals, everybody. We, we have to believe as a culture that you can do something in the situation like this. Um, and the options are very simple. Move, evade, and defend. If you can get out and away from that danger, that's what you want to do first. Okay. If you can't, you stay there and secure your location, and if not, you fight to survive. And, and there are some, some, some things that you can do that can make you survive. And we have all that up on our website, too. I hope people will go there and check it out so they, they know what to look for. Thanks so much, Greg. Absolutely. We will be right back.